everyone and welcome to a new video from your Overwatch. I'm Eddie the Chump and today we're going to talk about support play. Now there are many things that separate elite level supports and the rest of us. Some of it is raw mechanics, like with say a hero like Zenyatta, not everyone can be Jonak, despite my constant attempts to bribe any higher powers listening, but a lot of it is also tied up with decision making and it's actually that area which is the most noticeable. So we're going to cover some of the ways that top players get more value from this position in the hope that we can incorporate it into our own support play. I once heard a Blizzard dev saying that playing support is like plate spinning, and that's an apt metaphor. It's our job to maintain all the plates as well as we can, all while coming under direct attack which leads us neatly into my first point. Our survival is our responsibility. One of the most common misconceptions that actually arguably hinders a player more than it helps is the idea that it's your team's job to constantly protect you and peel for you when you're under attack. As a fellow support player, I hate to say this, but that isn't strictly the truth. Don't get me wrong, there are absolutely times where your teammates do have to do that, and you'd be rightly miffed with them if they completely failed to do so. But as a basic principle, it doesn't do you any good to focus on what everyone else is doing all of the time. It can be difficult to improve if you don't take control of your own destiny as much as possible. And in actuality, support heroes thankfully have quite a lot at their disposal to protect themselves. Anna Sleep Darts, Moira Fades, Lucio Boops, Mercy Guardian Angel Movement, all of these tools are there for you to master, and your proficiency with them shouldn't be limited in your mind to some sort of bonus if you pull them off. Among elite players, proper use of them is expected as standard. The closer you can get to that, the better. There's another quite common idea that players can just passively play healer and that's good enough. That's not really true either. A Widow player has pressure to hit an impactful headshot, a lot of times a hotly contested one. A Moira has pressure to keep herself alive so she can in turn heal others, again often while contested. Top level supports don't approach their own value with the attitude, well it's nice if I can live long enough to actually get it. They've taken the time to practice the part of their kit that gives them agency over their own survival. Now it's true. Some of these tools are harder to use than others. Sleep Dart is way harder to use than Moira Fade, for example. And if you're struggling to stay alive, it can't always be your team's fault. It might be a sign you need to pick a different hero that you can more easily keep yourself standing with. A common pitfall of supports trying to keep themselves alive is the tendency to engage in isolated duels. Now with some heroes like Zen, you will at some point have to do that. His damage is his defensive kit. But with almost all the others, dueling, when you should be healing, is a big miss. Play. The goal surely is, stay alive to get your value off for your team. When I watch the top players, it looks like they're playing some form of lethal dodgeball, dipping, ducking, diving, all while healing, and if that sounds hard, that's because it is. Support is not a role that one can hide in. Your production may be in a different area, but it's just as important, and you need to be alive to do it. As a perspective exercise, think about this. If you have a Widow on your team who constantly dies early, you'd probably be unhappy, rightly so. Especially if they could have easily avoided that death by using Grappling Hook to get away. Well the same is true of us support players. If a Mercy keeps dying instantly because they haven't learnt to use Guardian Angel properly, that's just as bad. I should know, because my Mercy isn't that great. Just like the Widow, who is under a lot of pressure to also make the right pick to solve a problem, say for example she's getting dove all the time so she needs to swap off onto another hero, so too are supports. It's just as important for a support player to make the right pick or swap where needed if they're being shut down. Thankfully there are more options than ever now, despite Brigitte not being great as one of two supports, lower healing is better than no healing because you can't stay alive. Supporting your other support. Now this next observation is one of the easiest to incorporate into one's own game. It came to me while watching a lot of the Overwatch League and it's something that's quite absent in lower tier play. Top supports apply their value where and when it's most needed. Sometimes that need is in the other support player because of the utility that they carry. The best example is probably when Mercy pockets a Zen when he's under backline threat. Now Zen is very borderline as a support in the first place but Discord and its importance is really the key. Discord does an incredible amount for your team. It makes up for the fact that Zen is a fairly weak healer, but it can't be leveraged if Zen is dead. Because it's so strong, pro teams go to great lengths to keep Zen up. The longer the Discord is on the field, the higher your team's chances of success. Now in lower tiers it's quite common to see supports ignore each other and put their main focus on the tanks. In fact, supports often give DPS a similarly short shrift for exactly the same reason. Some of that is because of how matchmaking is played, everyone fights 
tanks all the time, so tanks always need healing, but really this point is about recognising what's a priority. If something commits to attacking your backline, they're using cooldowns and expending resources in an effort to get value. If you're alive to that threat and make it impossible for them to achieve their goal, you flip that value on its head. It's something you see top supports do all the time. It's partly why Mercy is still really strong and why the pros still play her. Being able to pocket anything under threat at a moment's notice or res it mid-fight if it dies is incredible. Brigitte is also very well equipped for this job. One of my absolute nightmares when playing Zen is playing against a good Doomfist. It's enough reason to force a swap most of the time. You're an incredibly easy target for him if you're playing a slow support like that. That is not true if you have a Brigitte who's aware enough to know this. Shield bash stun and armor to your other support can shut down threats like that but only if the Brigitte has the game sense to know that keeping her other support or supports alive might be the win condition in that particular moment. Again, it's about being able to read the play in front of you, not just picking healer and thinking that's enough by default. Even a Harmony Orb on a Mercy trying to evade can be enough. If she stays alive, the thing she's pocketing stays alive too. Increasing efficiency. Now this last point is probably the hardest to implement and it will take mental and physical practice, but if you work on it, your play will improve drastically. To me, the clearest difference between great support play and lower tiers is how productive the better players are. Now that sounds like a bit of a tautology, better players do more, thanks Eddie, but there is actually some useful information there. When watching someone like based Unko or Lord Jonak stream, whatever support they play, they're constantly evaluating where the value is. If they're playing Zen, the Discord target changes rapidly, not because they're spamming it, but because the impact point of a fight changes that quickly. They're constantly trying to give the edge to their team in the place it's most needed. The same goes for their Harmony Orbs. They make constant use out of it, applying it to whatever teammate would benefit most. Usually that's a DPS in or about to be in a duel, all while keeping themselves alive and doing their own damage. Their actions per minute are much higher than most of us for sure, but that is something you can train to a certain extent and thankfully it's mostly a mental thing. To bring it down to a more human level for a moment, it's quite common for lower tier mercies to keep their healing beam on a teammate who's already at full HP, while another teammate, usually a DPS, needs healing right behind them. That happens because the player hasn't taught themselves the mental discipline of constantly looking for value. Many Mercies don't even use the damage amp beam, which when you watch pro play is a massive part of her kit. It's very hard to be a great support if you play kind of lazily. Perhaps the best example though is Anna. Streamers like TSM Gale can reach top 500 with that hero, despite her not being that great, simply because they're capable of so much productivity with her. Watch any great Anna player and they're always doing something. Healing, damage, sleeps, anti-nades, they never rest and that really is what it takes. How you improve at that is fairly simple but does take practice like I said. If you ever find yourself not doing much, look for where you're needed, train yourself through repetition to seek value out at every moment, it will eventually become second nature. With this increased awareness, the other things I mentioned like keeping yourself alive and supporting your other support will seem much easier too because you'll be so much more invested in the game that you're actually in. Despite what people think, support is not the easiest playstyle. Its challenges are different, but there's a reason we're all at the ranks that we are, whatever they may be, and it's almost always down to us and not the teams that we're playing in. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to leave a rating. If you never want to miss another video of ours again, please click the bell icon next to the subscribe button on our channel to join the notification squad. You'll be in great company. And finally, please follow the Your Overwatch Twitter. It's where you can find updates about new videos and other cool stuff. I've been Eddie the Chump, and until next time...